Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. My purpose is to help you get free from the emotional baggage that weighs you down so that you can be fully alive and engaged in life. My media includes audiobooks, self-help books, videos, and this podcast. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Have you ever allowed the Lord to be your covering? Today I'm going to talk about how understanding that concept of covering and being hidden can promote a greater sense of peace. I was doing a little bit of research into seeds I've planted seeds a few different times in my life. I'm sure you have too. Sometimes what I planted, I remember once I was, I thought I was planting flowers and a bunch of corn came up. So I think what happened was (laughs) the seeds from the bird feeder fell into the ground and somehow those germinated and the seeds that I had planted for flowers, they never did come up. So I never quite figured that out. But a seed has a covering. And so there's nutrition, there's life inside the seed. I talked about that a tiny bit last time. And the shell, the covering around the seed is the protection so that under the right circumstances and in the right environment and at the right time, the seed can germinate, come to life, produce fruit. Also, if you think about how a baby develops, a baby is hidden away inside of the mother, whether it's a human baby or the baby of an animal, it's hidden inside the mother until it comes to a place where there can be life outside of the little hidden place in the mother. And so there are are places in the Bible that talk about we are hidden in Christ. We are covered. In the Old Testament, the story of Noah, I believe that the uh, accounts in the Old Testament aren't just stories, but I believe they really happened. And there's a lot of scientific evidence to verify that those events really happened. I think they just found Noah's Ark in Turkey. I think it was in the I think it was in uh, the mountains. You wouldn't expect a ship to be in the mountains, would you? So anyway, getting back to this idea of hidden, that Jesus Christ is compared to the ark because people got into the ark so that they could be carried through a flood and then come out to a safe place that was peaceful. And Jesus is compared to that ark. There are other ways that Jesus is compared to a covering or to a hiding place. Maybe you know about the movie about the life of Corrie Ten Boom. It was called The Hiding Place. She survived a Nazi concentration camp. I read a lot of her books when I first came to know the Lord. They're very interesting. And they gave me a lot of insight into how to navigate difficult seasons of life, suffering evil, how to navigate evil and come out on the other side. So there are lots of examples. So I'm going to read a few scriptures to you that illuminate some different ways that Jesus Christ can be our covering that we can be hidden in him. So first I'm going to read to you from Isaiah chapter four, and I'm going to read verses five and six. And as is my custom, I'm going to read to you from the Amplified Bible. And the Lord will create over every dwelling place, a pavilion for shade in the daytime from the heat 
and for a place of refuge and shelter from storm and from rain. So the Lord provides a covering from the the things that would come against you. That those things happen. They're real. They don't stop. But we have a covering, protection. If we know how to use our faith to draw closer, to lean in, to allow the Lord to be our covering. There's a very similar verse in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. I like how sometimes the New Testament and the Old Testament say very similar things. Sometimes they're quotations, but other times it's a similar thought. My grace, my favor, and loving kindness is enough for you. My strength and power are made perfect, will show itself most effective even in your weakness. So may the strength and power of Jesus Christ rest, pitch a tent over, and dwell on you. That's writing from the Apostle Paul. Psalm 91 also talks about being hidden. And this uses the example of an eagle covering its babies in the nest. The person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. On him I lean and rely, and in him I trust. Then he delivers you from the snare of the fowler, from the deadly pestilence, He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. So again, that idea that we can be hidden under the under the like the wings, the wings of an eagle. If we understand what the Bible is saying, it can create much more peace and calm, regardless of what you're going through. We need to know God's word and then really like dig in with the images, with the verses. Sometimes I put an image up. I've talked about that. I will maybe find a picture that illustrates something so that I can, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So that that can help me when I'm going through something where I really need supernatural assistance. The Christian life isn't just logic and believing the correct things. It is experiential. And the more you learn how to draw on your faith for the peace, for the power you need, the happier you'll be and the more effective you'll be in navigating life. Now, Colossians 3, I'm going to start in verse 2. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things not on the things that are on the earth. For as as this world is concerned, you've died, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I think in some other places, it talks about the fact that when you receive Jesus as your Savior, You have an old nature. That's your natural appetites, your natural desires, your natural kind of default mode tendencies. Some of those aren't good. It's the sin nature is how the Bible describes it. So when you become a new creation in Jesus Christ, like it talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 or Galatians chapter 2, then your spirit becomes alive. The Holy Spirit is able to commune with you, to indwell you, and to transform you. So that old person, the power of the old nature is unplugged. You can plug it back in and you can live out of it. But the more that you live out of your connection to the Holy Spirit, the more that you allow your personality to be infused by the Holy Spirit, that old nature loses its power. So I'm not a theologian, but I believe that's the essence of that. 
So I'm going to read to you a little bit now from my book called Sheep Hear His Voice. It's the first book I wrote that talks about how to learn to hear how the Lord is speaking to you, how the Holy Spirit speaks to us through his word. And that idea of finding peace, of being hidden, of letting the Lord be your covering, it's connected to the idea of abiding in him. When when you sit on a couch that's comfy, you just sort of lean into it. You're not trying to stand up and support your own weight. You can lean into it. And so that's kind of that idea of abiding, of living out of the new nature and resting, being covered no matter what you're doing. So this is from page 62. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, you bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. So different churches have different names for things. It's good to go back to what the Bible says and not get confused about religious trends and traditions. Jesus invites each of us, to connect with him moment by moment throughout each day. Staying connected is called abiding or walking in the spirit. Galatians 5.16 says, walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. That is that old nature I was talking about. The Bible says we are spirit, soul, and body, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. We think of faith as a set of beliefs, intellectual, or behaviors, and forget our spirits. You can live controlled by your physical appetites. You can live and try to serve God from your mind or emotions, but that's the soul. The constant effort to resist old habits is exhausting when we do it from our own determination. Supernatural power and connection comes from living out of your spirit where the Holy Spirit abides in you. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 11. Most people don't seem to understand that principle. This type of intimate abiding is available to anyone in Jesus Christ. It's written about by people like Madame Jean Guillon and Brother Lawrence. Cultivating your spirit life in Christ leads to deeper joy and peace, greater revelation from God, and greater power in your life. So it's learning how to abide in him so he can be your covering, your protection. Take time to be still in the presence of God. Even Jesus did that. Invite him to fill you with his spirit and his presence each day. Cultivate regular contact with Jesus throughout the day. And again, before you go to sleep, you'll learn how to live out of your spirit and allow God to keep filling you with his Holy Spirit you'll find it easier and easier to recognize his voice. He is always eager to resume the conversation. So I've shared some thoughts with you today about how we allow Jesus Christ to be our covering on a day-to-day basis, how we can find a deeper measure of peace by leaning in, letting him be our covering, abiding in him. So let me pray for you as we close today. Lord, I thank you that it's your desire for us to live in a place of peace, that you want us to keep company with you, to talk with you throughout our day, that you love our company, our friendship. You don't want us to be afraid of you. You want us to approach you boldly, it says in Hebrews chapter 4. So I ask you, Lord, to minister to this believer, to increase their understanding of all that is available to them that will increase their sense of peace and joy, regardless of what they're going through. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for listening today. I love hearing your comments. I love getting your feedback. So this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.